Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is an asymptomatic young male with incidental finding on chest x-ray. Practically speaking, the best thing to do when an opacity is encountered on a chest x-ray incidentally is CT. However, we may, for the sake of classical teaching, try to answer a couple of questions about this lesion based only on chest x-ray. The first question is, is this lesion intrapulmonary or pleural based? And the answer comes from two well-known signs, the fading edge sign. Here you see that the lateral and inferior edges of the opacity are fading, unlike the well-defined medial and the superior edges. This fading edge sign denotes a pleural-based or chest wall-based lesions. The second important sign is the hilum overlay sign. Here we see the outline of the left hilum through the opacity of the lesion, which means that the lesion is not arising from the hilum or the adjacent parts of the lungs, of which we see also the pulmonary vessels, but anterior or posterior to it, probably from the chest wall or a plural based lesion. Is this cystic or solid? And the answer is solid because cystic lesions will have their lower edge well defined and their upper edge fading because of the effect of gravity on the fluid in the cyst in this erect radiograph, the opposite of what we see in this case. Is this lesion posterior or anterior? This is a more difficult question to answer. We may be able to answer it if we have two posterior anterior x-rays which have different position of the central beam or different forward inclination of the patient. Here we have a perfect example of that. The opacity has changed its shape and position in response to the change in the central beam location or the patient inclination. I have marked here the anterior parts of the left, second, third, and fourth ribs. Note how stable the opacity is in relation to them in the two views. Here we have marked the left, seventh, eighth, and the ninth ribs posteriorly. Now, see how the position of the opacity has changed in relation to them. The fixation of the opacity to the anterior ribs and the mobility of the opacity in relation to the posterior ribs in response to the change of the central beam location or the inclination of the patient forwards or backwards denotes that the lesion is arising from the anterior chest wall not the posterior. The last question is whether the lesion is destroying the bone and the answer is no in view of the preserved integrity of the ribs adjacent to the lesion. Therefore, we know before doing the CT that we are dealing with a solid anterior pleural based lesion related to the left 
second, third, and fourth ribs without bone destruction, probably a solitary fibrous tumor of the pleura. Here is the scout of the CT showing the same findings as the chest X-ray. And these are the CT sections showing the same findings and adding the important information about the inner architecture of the lesion, which is quite homogeneous, and ensuring the absence of other lesions. And this is how the lesion appears on the sagittal and the coronal reconstructions. And on the 3D volume rendered reconstruction. Now we are looking at the patient from the back and removing the posterior wall of the thorax to see the lesion related to the anterior chest wall from inside. Now, the left side of the patient is on our left hand side, and we can see the volumetric details of the lesion and its relation to the second and the third ribs. The lesion has been surgically removed with clear margins and proved to be a solitary fibrous tumor of the pleura. After the surgery, the patient who had normal blood glucose level before the surgery became suddenly diabetic. This teaches us something about an important feature of the solitary fibrous tumor. This tumor secretes insulin-like growth factor 2, and this expresses itself clinically in two different ways. Either the patient presents with hypoglycemia, which is cured by removal of the tumor, or the patient has occult diabetes before the surgery, which manifests itself only after removal of the tumor, as what we have seen in our case. So the diagnosis here is solitary fibrous tumor of the pleura. And the learning points are the fading edge sign and the hilum overlay sign help discriminate between intrapulmonary and the chest wall based lesions. We may occasionally know if the chest wall lesion is anterior or posterior by comparison of two posterior anterior radiographs. Solitary fibrous tumor may secrete insulin-like substance. This may show itself either as hypoglycemia, which is cured after surgery, or occult diabetes, which is manifested after surgery, as in the present case.